Coming to you from Crash Studios in Music City, USA, Nashville. This is the Rich Redman Show. On this episode, thought leader, speaker, and author of Pendulum, Michael Drew. And now, Rich Redman. Alrighty, what is up, rock and rollers? Rich Redman here. It's another exciting episode of the Rich Redman Show where we talk about all things music, motivation, and success. We're talking to authors, comedians, thought leaders, musicians, even drummers. A lot of drummers. That's my low hanging fruit. A lot fruit. of drummers. A lot of drummers, man. We got some serious drummers. ones on this week. They're going to be coming out soon. Jim McCarthy joining us, uh, South 65, south of Nashville. I'm coming to you from sunny West Hollywood, California. And today's guest from Salt Lake City. We're just talking about how they water the booze down there a little bit, but he's an acclaimed keynote speaker, book promoter, and the author of a killer book, Pendulum, that he co-wrote with Roy H. Williams, How Past Generations Shape Our Present and Predict Our Future, and it's right there, and my guest today is Mr. Michael Drew. How are you, man? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, man. What's that uh, painting behind you? Is that like, uh, should I know the artist? Uh, his name is uh, Gerald Rogers. He's an amazing uh, influencer out of uh, Salt Lake City, actually. Nice. Um, he's got, uh, I, I high, highly recommend that you look him up, but he's got some pretty amazing things that he's done here in the, uh, the art from uh, visionary things to some really beautiful artwork. So I like her. She looks like she has a, a nice big full head of hair and maybe some wings. I, I've been looking at her quite for uh, quite some number, number of hours today. So yeah, <laughs> yeah on there. Well, you, do you play a musical instrument because you look like a rock and roller, man? <laughs> uh, you know what? What's funny, um, I come from a large family of eight kids. My uh, younger brother, who works with me, is the founder of the Salt Lake Pops Orchestra. Oh. And he's got, he's got videos online where they've got 10, 50, 100 million views. Of the eight kids in my family, I'm the only member of my, of my family that does not play a musical instrument. But are you an appreciator? Oh, I love music. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I'm missing live music. I think everybody's li- missing live music right now. So when we were talking off camera, you were telling me about some of your accomplishments. So just tell us like how cool this book is and some of the, uh, some of your stats, like a baseball player. Like a baseball player. Well, yeah, <laughs> six foot one, 240 pounds, three, three, no, um, you know, I've been, I've been in uh, publishing for 21 years, and uh, I've got 108, as of last night, consecutive books on the Wall Street Journal, USA Today, New York Times bestsellers list. Amazing. Um, the agency that I run with my younger brother, and actually a, a, good, a good friend of mine, um, the founder of PR Web, David Buchanan, is called uh, Profluent. And what we do is we help uh, build influencers and thought leaders, leaders uh, with their business platforms. Nice. So, Kind of fun. Okay, so when we're off with this call, I am going to be picking your brain about your business model and how my next book could maybe come out through you guys. Who knows? I mean, stranger there things have happened. There we go. <laughs> now, Jim was telling me about Pendulum for a long, long time, and I ended up downloading the, I do this sometimes on Audible. I'm like, I can multitask because I can run or run errands or do and and still or get that stuff in my ear hole and get it in my brain. And I almost feel like this particular book I wanted to get the physical copy so I can look at the charts and the graphs and like really, really consume it. But no matter what, people go out and buy this book. Give us a little synopsis of like and what this book is about and how it relates to modern times because it really does. So, um, so my, my co-author, his name is Roy H. Williams. He's known as the Wizard of Ads. He owns the fourth largest ad agency in North America providing radio. I own the largest book marketing agency. Roy was my first New York Times bestselling author 21 wow. years ago. And um, as marketers, we wanted to give our clients a competitive advantage, right? And there's several ways to do that. And, and we're, a, we're a, a student of human persuasion, psychology, and that kind of a thing. And you know, we, we said one day, well, what if we could predict the future? Would that give our clients a, a competitive advantage? And we're like, yeah, probably it would. And so um, Roy was talking to the, the uh, dean of the psychology school at the U- University of Texas in Austin, Dr. Nicholas Grant, uh, back in, uh, this is back in 2002, being 2003. And he said, you know, Dr. Grant, 2003 feels an awful lot like 1963, uh, only in reverse. And he's like, yeah, it kind of is. And let me give you some books on that by Strauss and Howe and Faith uh, Popcorn and some other folks. And so um, we went through and, and wrote those books. And Roy's a strong evangelical. He's from Austin, Texas. And um, 
he said, you know, I, I directionally agree with this, but you, you see in both the Old Testament and in rabbinical uh, uh, literature, um, 40 years is a much more important uh, uh, time frame than the 20 uh, year time frames that Strauss and Howard come up with. Huh. And so what he and I did is we went back and researched, uh, and they, by the way, they only went back 300 years. We went back qualitatively and quantitatively uh, the last 3000 years um, looking for a pattern in the way society uh, changes its ideology from one mindset to the other. And we did this from about 2002 till two, 2011 when we, when we, we, I mean, this book's been out now for almost 10 years. So now right? you're talking, oh. it, it took a decade of research to yeah. cover 3000 years. Oh yeah. Even with the internet and everything else, like it's not just the data, it's being able to, we had a hypothesis that we went out to disprove most, most, non-scientists have an idea and they go out to prove it. That's not how science is done, right? So we went out to try to disprove this and we needed to have the right data points to be able to do so. And what became um, painfully obvious to us was that human beings are not, we're not unique snowflakes. We do the same, at least culturally in big groups, we do the same thing over and over and over again. It's why if you want to look at music today, compare it back to the 1930s and you'll see there's a lot of similarities in uh, both uh, tonality and, and voice and, and language and a lot of those other things because we're in the same uh, cultural mindset today that we were back in the 1930s. So you're saying there's like a 40 year swing of the pendulum there's where- two, two, There's two 40 year s cycles a me and a we. But if you want to know, if you want to go back into history to be almost in the exact same point that you are today, back in history, you go 80 years back. Wow. Okay. So you're, that's why you're saying the 1930s, there's Correct. commonalities with the tonality and it, the, the messaging of, of the songs. Like, is it? Hmm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You go back and listen to the, the songs. It was upbeat, jazzy stuff. Like life sucks. We're all going to die. I wish I had a better time. You listen to the lyrics of the music today. Life sucks. We're all going to die. <laughs> you know, same, same kind of thing. It's like Alice in Chains through the ages. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we, can look at, we, we can certainly look at, at the, uh, the grunge movement and the, the um, we're talking music history. We can look at the grunge movement and um, the gang rap movement as it pertains to creating the movement from one cycle to the other. But that's a different, different story. So Roy and I said, yeah, let's go back. We did the research. And what we found, again, marketing and advertising are done in non-intimate environments, right? You and I are having a conversation, so this is intimate. Um, your audience are experiencing this in a non-intimate environment, even though um, what we're doing, because it's intimate, emulates intimacy for them. It's still a non-intimate environment. <laughs> and so as advertising and marketing professionals, we wanted to be able to see what groups of people did and, and, and how they moved. And so when we finalized the... Um, the understanding of the movements of the cycle, it gave us a competitive advantage uh, in understanding where we are, where we've been and where we're headed, meaning it allows us to change how we hire employees, how we uh, retain employees, um, how we create new products or services and how we message our, our marketing. Wow. Um, it also had bigger cultural uh, implications. Like we predicted the presidential elections for, since 2008 based on the, based on the pendulum cycle uh, before the primaries, by the way. Um, but that's all based on the, uh, based on the, the, the truisms at a macro level when you, when you look at how culture moves. So where are we right now? Me or we? We are um, 17 years into a, uh, 18 years into a we cycle. Now, mm. to give uh, context, the last um, me was 1963 to 2003. So 2003 to 2043 is the we that we're in. Now, the thing about the pendulum cycle is that what we're looking at, what we're looking at is the physiology and psychology of a very young species on the spot, the Homo sapien. Yeah. And we're really not that old of a species. So our minds, our, even our bodies, our eating, how we digest food hasn't changed in the last, regardless of what your belief is, 10,000 years, 100,000 years, we're, we still function in the same way. So what we're looking at is the the way that human beings individually and in groups change and human beings are our, our psychology and physiology change at an agricultural rate, right? Which means at a very, very slow pace. The other thing that we know about humans, which is unique uh, over other species is that human beings always take a good thing too far. And so the reason why we have a pendulum versus a propeller or any other kind of organization is that, there's a beauty in a me. We can be in a we and demonize the values of, of a me, but there's a beauty in a me. Yeah. 
And there's a beauty in a we. What happens is, is that we take either one of them too far yeah. and you know who becomes the gravity that pulls us the other way is the youth, right? So the youth see how extreme we get on one, on, on one area and they pull us down until they become adults and take it too far the other way. And the youth from the, the next cycle pulls us down the other way. Oh, yeah. so that's why we look, that's why we have that, that pendulum movement. Yes. Right? I remember hearing that in the book a lot, very frequently. Again, Another good thing taken too far. <laughs> 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 Who did your VO? Did you did did you know the guy or? Oh, it's Roy. that was Roy and I. Oh, right? that's Roy. Wow, that's okay. Roy. Yeah, you, you hear Roy and I. So again, Roy owns the f- fourth largest ad agency in North America for buying radio, and so we used his staff to take the the, the manuscript for the book and to turn it into the script thing for the for the audio book, and then. He, he and I, and then a bunch of other people that they already do their, for their other ads, put, put that together. It, it, your experience for, for your listeners to hear is, is kind of like listening to a, a radio show from the 1930s, right? We, right? we wanted to make it entertaining, not just, and we're going to read the book, and here is the cycle, yes. and here is what happens. Right? It's not, that's not fun. Mm. Yeah, it's like the shadow knows. That's right. Ah, see? <laughs> Hate it. The dicks are coming, you see. I mean, that was entertainment. These, these crazy whippersnappers these days, man, I don't even want to start with. I mean, I'm sounding like a tie me to the railroad tracks guy with the mustache right there. <laughs> these crazy whippersnappers, but they wouldn't be entertained by the sound of a human voice. I mean, they, they need moving pictures. They need all that. You never know. Oh. They, 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 I mean, um, or social media or whatever else they need. But um, mm-hmm. regardless, the, the, the idea is that we, we do have these these cultural shifts. And, and again, musically, you want to see what's going to work next year, the year after, go back 80 years ago and see what was working then and then apply, apply the new musical style to that. Ah, so you're saying in the 30s, musically, everything was very upbeat. It was kind of like almost like Dixieland post-birth of jazz, 1917. But the I actual like music, I don't know. The stories are 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 dark, is what oh, you're saying. Oh, but there's sure. but they're set to like a a sprightly Sprite. beat. Yeah. Well, right. how do we yeah. both pick well, sprite? Well, what are the lyrics to Mac the Knife? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, dun, 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 dun. Well, it's totally upbeat. Hold on, let me see if I can pull up the lyrics for you. It's it's uh, Mac the Knife. Oh yeah, it was like oh yeah. McDonald's used it for a, for yeah. one of their you know ads. Hold on, just a second. I'll get you the lyrics. The lyrics. So for the, almost my entire birth cycle, it was born in uh, July of 70, we've been a, in a we? No, uh, no, no, you were in a me. Were a me I was in a me. So, the, yeah. so, when, so, so in the 80s, the, the Velvet Rope cocaine 80s was very me. Is very that uh, in yes. fact, the high, so it's 63 to 2003. So the zenith was 83. So mm-hmm. that's when we start taking a, a good thing too far, right? There's a beauty in, in self-expression and individualism. But well, I'll think about Woodstock. The yeah. king of pop was Michael Jackson. I don't know any bit more plastic than Michael Jackson. And every king has to have his queen, right? So who was Michael Jackson's queen? <coughs> no other but uh, the Madonna. And what did she sing in her first album in 1983? Because we're living in a material world, uh, and I am your material girl. Yes. I can't make that up. And that was like, I think that was like just, I forget when breast plants were invented, but, uh, but she didn't need them. I mean, she was doing fine. No, nah, she's been fine. But I, what I'm saying is, like, <laughs> you got to look at what we value um, and where we were in the cycle. Mm. The next year, the number one Super Bowl ad of all time was the Apple ad, the the from the book 1984, George Orwellian, yes. where everything is in control. It is so successful because it's, it's it, it, the exact right message to create contrast with the cultural uh, desire and and norms. Right? Yeah. If you did that today, that same ad, it wouldn't work. Yeah, and and, and really as well. Speaking of Orwellian, if you look at a, like a documentary that everybody's talking about, like the social dilemma, I mean they they have all the information on us. Whoever they, well, I, I, would, I would argue are we are we in a, a, a 1984 Brave New World uh, world, but yeah. we can we can have that as a different debate. Yeah, there's also the four kind of attitudes that each upswing and downswing has, which is uh, I'm okay, you're okay, you're not okay, I'm okay, and all that stuff. I mean, I remember that kind of being a theme even when I graduated high school in the 90s. Yeah. The music and everything with all the grunge, it felt a certain way there in that time. It just well, so so let's, let's talk about it because you're dealing with the youth movement in 
in um, contrast to the what was popular with the adults, right? So you get into '83, 20 years into the zenith. We just got through disco, right? We the, the, the great the great rock from the uh, from the '60s and early '70s is, is password. We're now through disco. We're now into roller you know, skates and 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 metal bands and and yeah. Michael ja- Michael Jackson, Madonna, and all of that, right? And so you start seeing a a, a, a rebellion from that mentality into man let's just keep it real let's just, let's just have it real so in 86 you see nwa right mm-hmm. and they they storm because it, we're this is what it's like growing up in compton man this is what it what it is yep. you talk you want, you want to talk about um alice in chains or nirvana or pearl jam or the entire grunge movement from the early 90s what are they doing They're like man this is what it's like growing up real man this is this is the suburbs my life isn't as bad, baby, as the folks in the gangster rap areas, but it kind of sucks, man. The, it, it, you can look you get like Pearl Jam talking about Jeremy, right? Pre- yeah. Mm-hmm. Predicting Columbine and, and other things moving forward. Because that's what it was like being real, man. Just keeping it real. And it was with the movement. Uh, again, this is not just something that just happened. This has happened time in memoriam as far back as we can research. For 3,000 years. For 3,000 years. As, yeah. as far as, as, far as we have modern um, uh, records on it, this is not just unique to now. Yes. But you, you move forward into the current we cycle we, we, we're at now because those kids started selling that ideology up uh, upwards. Now, if you look uh, 40 years before, when you went from we to me back in um, the late 50s, so – the, the, the last we was 1923 uh, to 1963. So you're, you're on, in the upswing or the downswing in going into the, the me. Um, the, the youth were selling a new ideology, right? So in, in 1951, you see the release of Catcher in the Rye. What did that book talk about? Man, I reject my family. I reject my school. I reject my, my government. My brother what, sucks. He, yeah. yeah. At, at, at the time when, when you've got like Donna Reed and, and, and all these perfect things going on on TV, because that's, the adult, the, the adult side of things. And then even from that to Jack Kerouac, even from Jack Kerouac to the release of this little men's publication, you know, the Playboy. one that, uh, Playboy. That's right. The one that taught us to have exclusivity and sophistication. And between and what about 19- the Beatles in 1964? That was a game changer well, right there. there well, well, there's something that happened before because in the late fifties, we were still too racist as a society to allow a black man to be the purveyor of our next type of music. Right, rock and roll is not a white man's music. It, no. it comes from jazz and from from uh, from Africans, African from pain. It comes from blues. blues. Yeah. yeah, yeah, blues. Right. So you you don't have the Beatles if you don't have Elvis Presley. Right. Yeah. Elvis Presley is what what popularized uh, black man's music to white culture. Yeah. So right. So that moves us. You, you see this movement from one cycle into the next. Well, same thing happened in the in the late nineties. Right. You you move from. Um, the, the kids that are saying, just keep it real, man. Let's just keep it real into the release of this, this other self-proclaimed Elvis Presley, right? Who, who was a white man who sang a black man's music and popularized it and became the number one artist for like four years in a row in, in yeah. Eminem, right? He was a white man singing a black man's music. Mm-hmm. And in fact, um, on the billboards, we know that from uh, 98 until I think it was about 2001, 2002, um, top five songs every year was rap. Straight up. And so that, that, what 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 years? We're all rap. The top the top five songs each year were all rap. Eminem ushered in this this confluence of not only a black man's music but also considered that gangster rap and um, the 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 uh, grunge movement were about keeping it real. Here here he is a white guy singing about what it's what, what it's real, right? You don't have Eminem without those two sets of music. But anyway, yes, I, I digress. Right? You see, so you see these movements. From me into we with the kids selling it upwards. The Rich Redmond Show will be right back. Those who are self-employed, especially musicians, think homeownership is unattainable. For Bruce Klein, it took seven years to purchase his first home as a self-employed working musician. But once he did, man, was it satisfying. So he decided he wanted to help other musicians and creatives gain that same satisfaction. Bruce earned his lending license and is now helping people avoid the mistakes he made on his seven-year journey. If you're a self-employed musician, he can help. Go to musiciansmortgage.com, powered by Movement Mortgage. Bruce Klein, NMLS, number 1465948. Movement Mortgage supports equal housing opportunity. NMLS, number 39179. NMLS, consumeraccess.org. Henry Ford once said that if you need a machine and don't buy it, then you will ultimately find that you have paid for it and don't have it. 
nothing could be truer about energy efficient LED lighting in your business. At Big Dot Lighting, we can show you how a portion of your savings from a commercial LED lighting upgrade will be paid for in hardly any time at all. Until then, you're paying for them anyway. Book a no-cost lighting energy assessment with Big Dot Lighting. At least 30% of your utility bill is waiting to be saved. Go to BigDotLighting.com. Are you a drummer looking to expand your drumming vocabulary or take your career to the next level? You can connect with me for one-on-one -on -one virtual lessons and consultations that are now 30% off. I cover topics like styles, reading music, the Nashville number system, charting, music business 101, and career guidance. Simply send me an email at booking at richredmond.com to schedule. And for more information on all of my products and services, visit richredmond.com. This is the Rich Redman Show. But I mean, a lot of those attitudes, like the cultural attitudes of I'm okay, you're okay, like we were talking before, right now, and, you know, kind of how Rich asked in the beginning how this all relates to what we're going through. You look around us, yeah. we're a society divided, you know. Uh, I'm okay, and, you're And it's up. funny because, yeah, I'm okay, I'm okay, you're not okay, uh, is what the attitude is right but Yeah, now. we're divided I mean, like 49 and 51%. I mean, it's like close. And it's funny, they said when they talk about the election, uh, the last oh, yeah, time we were this divided in an election was Abraham Lincoln. Oh, but, but, but also, wow. you realize that Jefferson and Hamilton um, were this divided as well, right? I mean, this, is, th this has happened before. So one of the things that, we, that people are really down on how, how polarized we are, we've been here, man. Yeah. We're, we're going through what we've yeah. been through before and we're going to go through it again and it doesn't feel good. And, it, and it's not, there's some really bad things about what, what, what's happening now. Um, but we're going to live, we're going to get through and we're going to learn from it. So what except we learn is, is, is a question, but you know, the last time this happened 80 years ago, we had Mussolini, Stalin and Hitler wow. in Europe. And we had, we had the, the Joseph, Joseph McCarthy and the Red Scare here. You know, um, during World War II, we lost Japanese internment camps. We lost another 200 million people on the off the face of the planet within the next 10 years within the same witch hunt cycle. So, yeah. like, it could be a hell of a lot. Excuse my language. A hell of a lot worse. Sure. Than where we're at now. Yes. Oh yeah. And that's and something Mussolini. to really keep in mind. My my mom had mentioned to me that you know I've never seen it this bad. You know, and I'm like, mom, you were born in 1941. Of course, you were you were a child back then. You were a baby. You, you it's you know. Uh, I think one of the things that got Pendulum brought to the forefront of at least my mindset was a blog that you guys put out called uh, 2023 will be 1943 all over again." Is that right? Yep. And that is you know something that really kind of makes you go, "Oh my gosh, what does that mean?" You know? <laughs> <clears throat> and look, it can always be worse, but the other side of it is no matter how bad it gets, we will get through it. We've been here before. It's going to last for how long it lasts. It's a 20 year cycle from uh, 2013 till 2033. And we call it the witch hunt cycle. Um, every, we call it witch hunt cycle because every witch hunt in the history of the world happened in that tw same 20 year time frame within the swing of the pendulum. Wow. Every single one without exception. Because it's the what happens when you take ladies. we too far. See, when you take me too far, we become a society that's plastic, phony, and a bunch of posers, right? Think about the, the, the 80s and the, and the 90s. Oh, yeah, the, 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 the cod piece and the tight pants and the hairspray. Right. <laughs> There's lo, lo, I mean, we, we, we could talk about, you know, uh, George Michael. We could talk about Wham. We could talk, I mean, all sorts of things we could talk about from that. But that's a different type of taking it too far. When we take we too far, we's about coming together, doing what's best for society as a whole. When we take we too far, we start demonizing groups that aren't part of our group. And, and we've said this for a number of years even. Let's say that your, your, um, your group is all about recycling, right? We, we can do this in parties. We can bring it down if you want. Well, if I recycle uh, uh, tin cans and glass, well, that's great. But if you also do plastic, and I'm not doing plastic, then I'm evil. I'm bad. Right. You can yeah. see in both Democrat and Republican parties today, there are wings of both parties. If you don't take our conservative stance, if you don't take our progressive stance, you're, you, uh, you're, you're bad. It, like we, <laughs> it's we, very black and white. We break down, it's black and white. We break it down into these smaller groups and we demonize. Now, mm -hmm. from a business stand, uh, front, there's some real, really good learning from that. There's some cultural problems with that, but there are some business advantage. If you want to create a movement or a following, if you want to differentiate yourself from your competitor, well, then by all means, Create, uh, define what you stand against. 
because in that definition of what you stand against, will you'll create uh, like-minded uh, followers, right? I Fans. totally want to stand up, stand up apart from my competitors, man. Oh, you don't, you don't want to, you don't want to isolate anybody. Well, come on. Look, here's a reality. Um, I, I know very few people who voted for Biden because they like Biden. I know very few people who voted for Trump because they like Trump. Most people I know on I, who voted either side either voted against Biden or voted against Trump. Period. Right. The, the vast majority of Biden won this presidential election because of people who voted against Trump. Mm. If Trump had won, it would have been because of people who voted against um, Biden and Pelosi and, and the, 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 the liberals that they've used creating conspiracies. It, it doesn't matter what side. That is the belief. That is the reality. The, 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 I'm not voting for you. I'm voting against him. Against you. Yeah. Nice. <clears throat> oh, that's the, 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 what, oh, my God. Well, here's wow. the thing is I thought that people, you know, uh, people voting for Biden, like you said, are voting against Trump. You know, and I said, but on the other side, people voting for Trump are voting both against Biden and for Trump. I think. Yeah. Uh, I, I, thought I, that I think was it depends on. The, like, I think it depends on part of the part. I know a lot. Yeah. I, I live in a state where people held their nose and and were, were voting for Trump because they were voting against Biden. Yeah. As just, I think that's just, been just, that case since 2004. Even you know when Bush and Gore were going through it. Well, again, but we're in the, we're, we're we're talking about since um, since. Uh, Obama's second term, it's, it's been that way. You're voting for, yeah. you're voting for, uh, you're voting against someone. Wow. Well, people, uh, people really vehemently voted for Obama for sure. Yeah. They really liked him. And, you know, I've always said that I would love to have the guy on, you know, any of the, one of the shows that we do, I produce yeah. that he, I just, I'd love to have well, a they, beer with him. They, they, yeah. they voted for him. And then in the second term, his votes went down, right? Cause it, 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 he uh -huh. got in, he got those votes in and now you're, de you're, you're going back into where we were cyclically. And remember Obama sat in a, a time frame uh, in our pendulum cycle where it, it was during the transitionary period from me to we, right. It was right, right at that, at, at that crux in which the, the actual choice was a maverick and a community organizer, a maverick representing the, the previous me and a community organizer representing the we, which, which you think is going to win. Anyway. Yeah. Wow. Well, I, I, Makes sense. You're very articulate, man. That is very deep, and I, I can't believe the amount of – no wonder that took a decade to go back. <laughs> so you're saying, you're saying that pretty much we're looking at a, an 80-year – Full I'm not saying cycle. Much, I'm saying absolutely. Every <laughs> every eighty years, three thousand years ago. Yep. That Guess is what? an amazing pattern. It's it's, you know, it's the, all mapped out. You can see every single one of the cycles in the proof in the book. Yeah. Well, you could. I the, encourage everybody to, to to buy the book, consume the book, listen to the book. So you're speaking. The, what do people usually yeah. hire you to speak on? Is it on this subject, or do you talk about the publishing or branding, or what's the um, well, I've done about f the, what we call the pendulum presentation about 500 times. Nice. Um, I've probably done other, pre other presentations at, at two to 300 times. So you probably don't so, need PowerPoint. You got it in your head there. You're good. Well, it, no, except that when I do, <laughs> no, 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 hold on. When we do pendulum, I don't want to argue an intellectual position. So the majority of the presentation is like, cool, I'm going to sit back. I'm going to set up the context and I'm going to show you videos. I'm going to show you ads. I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you writers. I'm going to show you what happen, happens in the real world. Yeah. Cause I don't need to, I don't need to argue anything. When you see what we actually do, what happens in actual culture, it becomes undisputable. And, and that's got to help you in your business because you're coming from a, like a deep knowledge base here of how to separate your clients from the other clients in the cultural period that we're in right now. Indeed, and moving forward. And we'll know the shifts that are happening before the rest of society does. So some people that are claiming that they're, they're um, experts in branding and marketing may, without this knowledge, be doing the completely wrong thing for themselves or for their clients. They may be doing what's in their client's best interest right now intuitively, and they may have some sense of intuitively moving. They won't know why. And, and here's, here's what we challenge all of our, our clients and people who look at hiring us. I, I don't want you to hire me because of my innate talent. I want you to hire us because I'm giving you a model that you, that you can use whether I'm alive or dead. And you know that if we bring someone else in, if I died, that there's not going to be a drop off. And the only way to do that is by having very clear models and systems that are predictable, proven, 
um, and that are testable on an ongoing basis. So I don't, I don't like hiring. I don't, I don't want someone to hire me for talent or, or hire uh, our competitors for talent hire based on proven processes and systems. Systems and processes. Systems and processes. It's like, that's what Jim and I need. We're running so many businesses that it's like, we need somebody in a room that's just doing systems and processes. You'd be proud of me. All day long. I actually have assistants now. Well, uh, are they like, yeah. are they elves or, or they, they work here at, they work oh, here gotcha. at big, big dot. <laughs> I really wanted them so to they, be elves. Yeah. Guess what? You're, you're going to be helping well, me. This, out with it is the holiday. Stuff. So it might be enough. Right. Right. <laughs> I, can I don't know about you guys, but I'm ready for that Turkey, man. I mean, I am ready for the outside, stuffing. For uh, the uh, Outside 20, uh, 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 six feet away from your family and friends. Cause you're in California. Well, you know, yeah, so yeah, where they're limiting everything. They're giving us advice about all that, which I, 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 this could be good. I don't know, but I just know that we're we're going to a Thanksgiving dinner with four people. So, and we're all being tested, and so we are going to hug the hell out of each other. It's going to be a twenty-four square foot room, right? <laughs> Y'all be in different corners. At least, yeah, we're I know. We're going Jim, camping. Jim is shaking his head because the culture, the, the cultural differences between what's happening with lockdowns in California and what's not happening at all in Nashville is, is so yeah. it's full pen. But I mean, the one thing that we also talk about is that, you know, it's the ugliest part of the cycle is the we, uh, oh. and the most brutal most of the time, uh, the way to get around it. And you put it beautifully yesterday was identifying that, that, that one thing that can rise above it all and try and identify it. It's uh, and I think Roy put it in the book that by saying, look, understand the, your, your opposition's message better than they can. Yep. And you know, it's, it's sales one one I, yeah. I, it's, it, it, when it also, we get an objection, agree. It also creates <clears> something that whether it's intellectual or emotional that is missing um, mm -hmm. society, which is empathy. Right. I don't have to agree with your side, but if I under, but if I understand it, if I have empathy for it, I can at least know that you're not a bad person. I don't think that most Democrats are bad. I don't think most Republicans are bad, but most Republicans think that, that most Democrats are bad. Most Democrats think that most Republicans are bad. Like, <laughs> there's no reason for that thinking in society. And that's based on, on um, one, because of the cycle, but because of the loss of empathy, whether it's emotional or intellectual empathy that's been lost. The other thing that, that to your point that I said yesterday, Jim, that is important to me that I think has been lost um, in most of Western civilization is the belief in something greater than yourself. When, when you're stuck on the, the, you, you, your own needs as an individual and you're only looking at that um, isolated insular position, you miss what's bigger. You know, um, I, 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 it's not spirituality it, really is what we're talking about. No, but, but it doesn't help me spirituality. I, 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 you could go find, I call it finding your Don Quixote. Don Quixote is a fictional character. Don Quixote did not exist in real does not exist in any reality, but he represents someone who was willing to chase after ideas and dreams bigger than his own. Yeah. He was willing to love from afar. He, you know, in the book, the book series at least, he never met Dulcinea. He loved her from a distance. He served her from a distance. And so I, I think that whether it's the ideology of Don Quixote, or if you want to use Christ, or if you want to use Reagan or FDR, these people Captain America. have ideas that were bigger than themselves. I mean, you, it's, 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 it's kind of, of funny, even in, in the, the comic superhero space, you look at, you know, the late, the early 80s, Superman was huge, and Superman was an imperfect or perfect, nearly perfect being. The right. only weakness he really had was Krypton, yeah. Kryptonite. And, the spin you know, doctors. His, yeah, I mean, he, <laughs> he basically always had that perfect kind of persona. His personality was American. Uh, a lot of the superheroes of that time, but look even that in that space, uh, you know, comic book space and how the hero became the anti-hero, you know. Yeah. Let's um, see, back to 2006, you, start, you, you look at Dexter and Breaking Bad. Yeah. I mean, it was just a normal. Um, yeah. Right. You've got the Sopranos, you've got all of these antiheroes. And then we start looking at um, how do we do Batman in, 2000, uh, in 2006, 8 and 10? We're looking at a very flawed uh, individual. Yeah. Who goes Look at the one in 1989. Michael versus, Keaton's Batman. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Um, so in fact, if you want to if you want to 
spend a weekend understanding the shift from me to we and how far we can get go go watch the 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 uh batman uh rises series that came out with uh, christian bale in in the late 2000s because you go from a, a, a me individualist in the first movie who finally realizes he's got to do something for someone more than himself to someone in the second movie who fully sacrifices himself for the betterment of everybody at the end of the movie to um in the third movie when when things are taken to when we is taken too far and they have kangaroo courts and everything else in Gotham, right? You have the full transition from me to we to taking we too far, uh, and and a fun way to be able to to understand it uh, by watching that 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 series. Yeah, I I I mean I mean I to me I feel like this is a two part series, Jim. I think this is like an unprecedented because I feel like now I don't seem so crazy, right? I feel like Michael's <laughs> brain is so big. I don't even know how it fits into that skull. I mean, but you are totally tickling my hypothalamus, no, no. hippocampus. It's a hypo. It's it's it's, it's some sort of hypo. So if is people want to be. Area? I, how do you want to be found? How can people find you to, to hire you for your services and your very large brain? Very large brain. I'm not sure that they make it higher. Um, so the, my website's promotebook.com, P-R-O-M-O-T-E-A-B-O-K.com. My email I give out to everybody is michael at promotebook.com. Um, really simple. Uh, would love to come back and talk more about Pendulum or whatever else. And there's lots of, lots of things we can discuss, including how we were able to use pendulum uh, to predict the last three presidential elections. I mean, maybe that's, maybe that's a great jumping off point for part two. We just talk about the elections because we have never gotten political on this show because this show is mostly about unicorns and rainbows, which is basically putting our head in the sand and just, and just committing to happiness. And the, and the rainbow's conservative. Is that what we're saying? Um, no, they're both just very, just candy land, you know, Liv like no molasses tries swamp. to live in the land of positivity all the time. Yeah. yeah. Dang, I'm just in the room. I, I know. Bind the two together. I know. Well, that's, that's why you're great to have as a guest because that's here why, I, that's why I think that we need to find Quixote. I think what, what's needed in society today is for people to go find Quixote. And I think in, in, in the, the land of uh, rainbows and unicorns that Quixote is the perfect, um, imperfect person to follow for all of us. Nice. And I like just the way you say it. Can you do say it one more time? Quixote. Quixote? Yeah. Don Quixote by Miguel Cervantes. I love it, man. I love it. I've had so much fun. Jim, this is great. Like Jim makes suggestions for guests and I, he never gets it wrong, man. I knew it, Jim. I, well, you thank you. You're All right. welcome. Michael, thank you, man. You're a pleasure, man. What a, what a groundbreaking book. You're so articulate. A giant brain on you, man. I want to continue this conversation. I really, really in, enjoy it. And uh, check out the book Pendulum, everyone. And, and Jim, thank you for your time and talent, man. You always bring so much to the table. Definitely appreciate it. And everybody out there, if you're enjoying this show, you want to give us some praise. You want to give us some criticism. I got an email address for you, the Rich Redmond Show at gmail.com. If you love what we're doing, subscribe, share, rate, and review. Tell a friend. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, guys. This has been the Rich Redmond Show. Subscribe. Rate and follow along at richredmond.com.